Hello. My name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here. The SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problem that you will find on page number 874. Please turn to it, page 874. Always make sure that the book is in front of you. If at the end of the video you find this helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me and if and you wish to get hold of me, you can send me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com. Let's begin, shall we? On the blackboard what you see here is what we did yesterday, problem number 16 that appears on page 871. This was a problem that deals with the concept of sine of x has to equal to cosine of 90 minus x. This is the concept we dealt with in problem number 16. And towards the end of the video, I was going to share with you two more examples, two more similar problems that appeared in the book that we had done already. And I forgot to share that with you, share that with you as the video ended. So I'm going to tell you right now, this problem again one more time, number 16 on page 871. I would like you to compare that one with number 36 that we did on page number 613 on day 30 and number 25 on page 477 on day 17. This is a very simple concept and yet I found out that a lot of students miss these questions. I don't know why, but they miss it. Just remember, sine of, sine of, sine of x degree uh, it has to equal cosine of 90 minus x. And that's all there is. Today is our day number 47 and we are on page number 874. Number 17. Number 17. It's a very long problem with a diagram and everything. You can you can read that yourself. Obviously the book is in front of you, you know exactly what you're dealing with. But in number 17, all we have to do is solve this equation for h. That's all it is. Very simple, very straightforward thing here. So 2h will have to equal 25 minus d. And then therefore h would simply be half of 25 minus d. And that is answer number b. Now this problem, as you can see there on that page, comes in a set of three problems, 17, 17, 18, and 19. So, so listen carefully to what I have to say. In this section, in this section there are 38 problems, 30 of them multiple choice, 8 of them are gradients. Since there are 30, since there are 30 multiple choice problems in this section, that tells us that the first 10 are easy, the next 10 are medium, the last 10 are hard, 21 through 30. Having said that, there is an exception. The exception is this situation right here. When the problems appear in a set of pair, if it's just a pair, a set of two problems, and the first one is usually easier, and the second one is a little bit harder. It no longer follows this thing. It doesn't matter where they appear. Similarly, if they appear as a triplet, the first one is very easy, as you just saw here, very straightforward. The next one that you're about to do is going to be medium, and the last one is going to require some work. It's going to be difficult and a lot of people are going to miss that one. Having said that, let's begin. So not all three of these, not all three of these are medium, even though they appear in the medium territory. The first one was easy, the next one we are about to do is medium, and the last one is going to be hard. Number 18 says that the depth, the depth we are told has to be at least 9 inches. We are further told that the height has to be at least five inches. The question simply is which of these four inequality that is shown to us will do the job for H. But we know we know that H has to be equal to or uh, 2H plus D has to equal to 25. That's the constraint we have to follow when we are building the stairs. Now Let's put down the minimum value that we're allowed for D. The minimum that we can have is 9 inches because it has to be greater than or equal to 9. 
So I put in 9 here, see what happens. So 2h has to equal 25 minus 9. 25 minus 10 would have been 15, so it's 16. h is 8. The height is going to be 8 inches as long as the depth is at as the absolute minimum that is allowed, which is 9 inches. But of course, depth can be more than 9 inches. The depth simply has to be equal to or greater than 9 inches. So if that happens to be 10 inches or 12 inches or anything more than 9 inches, the height has to be less. Therefore, the constraint that we have is that height needs to be less than or equal to. It cannot be, it cannot exceed 8. It cannot exceed 8. And we also know from before, right here, we also know that height has to be more than 5. There you go. Height has to be more than or equal to 5, and it cannot exceed, and it cannot exceed 8. That's the constraint. And there is answer choice C. There is answer choice C. This is number 19. Nineteen is I already warned you twice that it's not going to be so straightforward. So in number 19 we are told that the total rise has to be 9 feet. By the time we finish climbing all the stairs we are required to go 9 feet. 9 feet of course is simply 9 times 12 which is 108 inches. Because everything else is expressed in inches we have to convert this into inches. We also know that the height has to be between 7 and 8 inches. We are told that. We are told that the height of each step has to be between 7 and 8 inches. Let's write this in the form of an inequality. Another the conditions that we have to fall is that, another conditions that we have to fall is that, the number of steps in this stairs has to be odd, has to be an odd number. In other words, the stairs that we're building, the stair that we're building cannot have 12 steps or 12, 10, 14 steps or 10 steps. It has to be odd number of steps, 11 or 13 or 15, some odd number of steps. That's those are the requirement. Let's begin our work, shall we? So we know we know we have to go up to 108 inches. And we know the steps height has to be either seven in, between 7 and 8. So if it is 8 inches, that will tell us how many steps we need to have. And if it, if it is 7 inch, the height has been 7 and 8. The height, if height happens to be 7 inch, this quantity will tell us how many steps we need to build. The number of steps that we can build has to be between these two quantities and has to be odd. Let's find out what this is, shall we? Let's divide top and bottom by 8. To divide top and bottom by 8, 8 disappears and 10 has 1 8. After we take away 8 from the 10, we have a remainder of 2. 2 goes and joins the 8 and becomes a 28. And 28 has 3 3 8s. 3 8s are 24. After we take away 24 from the 28, we have a remainder of 4. And that 4 needs to be divided by 8. In other words, in other words 108 divided by 8 is 13 and a half. Let's see what we get here. Let's divide top and bottom by 7. 7 goes away and 10 has 1 7. 10 has 1 7. After we take away 10, after we take away 7 from the 10, we have a remainder of 3. What happens to that 3? That 3 goes and joins the 8 and becomes a 38. And 38 has 5 7s. 5 7s are 35. After we take away 35 from 38, we have a remainder of 3. And that 3 needs to be divided by 7. So the number of steps that we can number of steps that we can have has to be somewhere between 13 and half and 15 and 3 seventh. That leaves us only two choices. Either we can have 14 steps or we can have 15 steps. Those are the only two choices left because the number of steps obviously has to be a whole number. So it can be 14. It can be 14 because it needs to be an odd number of steps which means we're going to have 15 steps. Now that we know how many steps we need to build, let's find out what's going to be the height of each step because we know we need to go up to 108 inches. Let's do it on the top. We're going to build 15 steps. 
And what we're trying to find out here is the height of each step. So let's divide top and bottom by 3. And we know that 108 is divisible by 3 because as long as as long as the sum, SUM sum of the digits of a number is divisible by 3, the number itself is divisible by 3. And here we have 1 plus 8 is 9, 9 is divisible by 3, 108 is divisible by 3, and 15 of course is divisible by 3. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. If you divide 15 by 3, we get a 5. 10 has 3 threes. 10 has 3 threes. After we take 3 threes and 9, after we take away 9 from the threes, we have a remainder of 1. That one goes and joins the 8 and becomes an 18. And 18 has 6, six threes. In other words, 108 divided by 15, when we divide top and bottom by 3, it's 36 over 5. Let's write this here. 36 over 5. Let's multiply top and bottom by 2. And when we do that, we end up with 72 over 10. And why did we multiply top and bottom by 2? Because by doing so, we end up with 5 times 2 at the bottom 10. Now it doesn't matter what appears on the, on the top. It's very easy to divide any number by 10. We just have to move the decimal. So 72 divided by 10 is 7.2. The question is, what does the 7.2 represent? 7.2 represents, I need to erase all of this thing. 7.2 represents the height of each step, not the depth, not the depth, do, do not pick answer choice A, do not pick answer choice A, that is wrong, if you look at the answer choices, 7.2 is one of the answer choices, that answer choice is waiting to be picked, that answer choice A is waiting to be picked by those people who have invested all the time, all the time in this problem, have done all the work in this problem, they have arrived here and at that point they lose the concentration and they forget that they are solving for, we are supposed to be solved for depth, not the height. This story is not finished yet. We have to go one more step. We have to go one more step by realizing that the constraint that we have to follow is this. 2 times h plus d has to equal 25. Now we have to put in this value of depth in here and solve for h. Let's do this, shall we? Oh, sorry, there's this value of height. I almost made a mistake myself. Put this, this value of height in here and solve for depth. I wonder what would happen, what answer we will get if we were to about to make a mistake that we, I said. If you were to put 7.2 for d and solve for h, I bet you that's also one of the answer choices. But this is the height. So 2 times 7.2 plus d has to equal 25 and therefore d is equal to 25 minus 2.7.2 2 times 7.2 which is 14.4 minus 14.4 and that will give us 0.6 4 minus 4 will be 0 there you go 10.6 is the answer the depth after having said all of this thing all said and done the depth needs to be the depth of each step needs to be 10.6 inches, 10 and a half inches, or 10, 10, 10 10.6 inches, 10.6 inches. For a second, I thought it was feet. In which case, it would have, it would have been 10 and a half feet. But these are inches, 10.6 inches. That's it. That is number 19. As you can see, there's a world of difference between the amount of work that was required in number 17 and what was required in number 19. We are done with that. Number 19 was a hard one, it was not medium one. Now we are back to our scale, number 20. We are looking for some of the solutions. Some of the solutions. To this equation. Well obviously in this equation, either, either x minus 6 is equal to 0, or x plus 0.7 is equal to 0. If x plus 6 is equal to 0, that tells us that x has to be 6. 
in this or in this case or x has to be negative 0.7 and therefore the sum of the solutions sum of the solution has to be 6 plus negative 0.7 which is simply 5.3 there we go we are done simple straightforward number 21 number 21 In number 21, I had to put a whole bunch of things on the blackboard before we can answer the question. So here's what's going on. We wanted to find out what is the average weight of a fish in a given pond. There's a pond there. I want to find out what does, the, what does an average fish weigh in this pond. So I took a random sample. I took a random sample. To weigh, to weigh different fish. There are several different types of fish in my pond, and of course I took a random sample. Obviously, I'm going to get all of, all 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 the types that are there. It turns out that my sample had 150. that I sample of fish that I took out from my pond had 150 I don't know how to pronounce this thing B-A-S-S base I believe base or bass I don't know it was the type of fish 150 this kind of fish among all the other types what they don't tell us is the, what they don't tell us is the actual size of the sample maybe my sample was 500 fish I took out 500 random sample of 500 fish or 1000 fish or maybe 300 fish or 200 fish I don't know but it doesn't matter Point is, among the in that sample, 150 of them were this type of fish, and I and I weighed each one of them, and I found out that of this fish, of of these 150 fish, 30 percent weighed more than more than two pound. That is the whole story. That's the whole story. Now our job is to read all four of the answer choices and decide which one of them would be a proper inference to make from this story. And as you go through the answer choices, as you go through the answer choices, and I'm not going to go through all four of the answer choices because it will take way too long. As you go through the answer choices, you will see that answer choice D tells us that approximately, approximately. 30% of base weigh more than 2 pounds. Do you think that's a reasonable conclusion? Of course it is. Because that's exactly what we see here. 30% weigh more than 2 pounds. 30% of which fish? Not all the fish from that, we they, that we took off from the pond. 30% of the fish that were of this type, base, there were 150 of them. And 30, of, as, as we started weighing all, all 150 of them, we found out that about 30% of them weighed more than 2 pounds. And that's exactly what this says. It says approximately 30% of base weigh more than 2 pounds. The answer is D. That's the only logical, safe conclusion we can draw from what we have at our hand from the observation that we have at our hand. Number 22. Let's see what 22 has to say. 22 uh, is asking us for the median number of votes for 21 states. 
21 states. What's the median? Of course we know what a median is. Median is the middle number in a set of observations when all the numbers have been arranged either in ascending order or descending order, either increasing order or decreasing order, doesn't matter, but the numbers need to be arranged from the highest to the lowest order or the other way around. And then if you do that, whatever the middle number happens to be, that's your median. Here we have, lucky for us, we have 21 states, odd number of states, which means we're going to have 10 lowest here, and the 10 highest here, and this is our median. Our median is going to be observation number 11, because we have 10 here, 10 here, that's 20, and 11th observation. We just have to locate where the 11th observation is. So let's take a look at it. Here are the votes. We have 10, 11, 12, 13, and 15. Good. Because I thought for a second, for a split second, I thought they are going to play dirty tricks and they give 14 as one of the answer choices because in a hurry one might assume that we have 10, 11, 12, 13, and then 14. And they, had they put 14 as one of the answer choices, that would have been quite dirty. But they are not playing dirty tricks. So that's what we have. Those are the number of volts. Those are not the frequency. That's, that's not the number of frequencies. Now we put down the number of time each of that hap happens, which is also known as the frequency. How often does it happen? How frequently it happens? How frequently, how many states have 10 volts? And the answer is 4. So which means the first 4 states, when you line them up, from the lowest number of votes to the highest number of votes, the first four, first four of the states have 10 votes each. But that's not blasted good. We don't want to stop at the fourth observation. We want to stop at the eleventh observation. So let's go to the next one. It turns out the next four states have 11 votes each. We are up to eight states. That's no good. We want the eleventh state. Let's keep on going. There is only one state that has 12 votes. Now we are up to we are up to nine, eight. 4, 4, 4, we have to ninth state. In other words, after we arrange them up from the lowest to the highest, the ninth state in the order will have 12 votes. Let's keep on going. There's only one state that has 13 votes. That's not good. That only brings us up to 10. We need the 11th observation. Let's keep on going. And then they tell us that there are three states that have 15 votes each. These three states, I left no room for myself, so I'm going to squeeze it here. These three states represent, these three states represent the 11th, the 12th, and the 13th state, in order. And we're looking for the 11th, but they're all the same, doesn't really matter. The 11th state, after they've been arranged in order, has, has 15 volts. Therefore, the median is 15. The median number of volts for these states that are labeled here, have, not have rather, has, median state, singular, median, the state that falls in the middle, the median number of votes is, fif is 15. That's the end of that page, that is the end of our lecture today, I'll meet you again tomorrow, we'll pick up from where we left off, we'll move on to the next page, in the meantime if you wish to speak with me, send me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com, alright, bye now.